Oh, well, you know what time it is. It's Real Talk with the Pimp Cron. And today I've got 10 musings, 10 little facts, I guess you could say, 10 little laws, 10 little opinions that are really hard to deny. And I think basically all of us can agree on it about our hobby and about wargaming in, in general. Okay. So they're going to start with the things that are maybe most arguable, like things that may not apply to every single one of you all the way up to some things that are pretty darn undeniable that I, I really don't think anybody could argue with me on. Okay. So let's start with number 10, 15 millimeter and less is just too small. You ever heard the analogy that old people eventually just hop off the fashion train? I think it was like Jeff Foxworthy or somebody said that 20 years ago where old people, they just suddenly choose a style from an era and then they dress like that for the rest of their life. They just hopped off. A lot of war gamers are like that, you know, the old old hammers where they're like, oh, third edition was best. Oh, well, I'm done now. I play third edition forever. Well, there's a point where most war gamers just hop off the train. And that point is typically 25 to 28 millimeter. A lot of people think 32 millimeter is fine, right? A lot of people obviously think 28 millimeter is fine. The most people think 28 millimeter is fine. And then many people think 25 millimeters fine. 25 millimeter really is Lord of the Rings battle game. And um, Mantic is really a 25 millimeter, whereas 40K is a 28. And things like um, uh, Malifaux or Wild West Exodus and those, those are 32 millimeter. Within that range, basically, everybody can agree that that is acceptable for miniatures. But if you get less than 25 millimeter, that's when stuff gets weird. Your miniatures get really small. It's hard to paint them. It's actually really easy to paint them, but it's hard to make them look good. And a lot of people don't own terrain for 15 millimeter or smaller. Because you know, Wargaming goes all the way down to like 5 millimeter. And I've seen that in uh, Wargames Illustrated. Guys do 5 millimeter warbands. And their whole troop of like 100 people is just where they cut off uh, the tips of uh, uh, toothpicks. And it's like 100 toothpicks just colored little dabs of color and that's their troops because it's so darn small that it like basically fits on a quarter coin. I would say that for number 10 of this list, most people can agree that 15 millimeter and lower is just too small. It just is. Sorry. I really like 15 millimeter. I like the look of it, but most people do not like smaller than 25 mil. Number nine, basing always makes the look the model look better. Now, I didn't originally think this when I first started. I fought it. I didn't want to do basing. I was basically being lazy, et cetera, et cetera. But then when I started basing my models, I was like, damn, this does look really cool. Even if your basing doesn't match the ground, which is always something that kind of bothers me. That's why most of my people are like on dirt, dirt and rocks. Because, you know, dirt and rock can be city. Dirt and rock can be forest. Dirt and rock can be arguably desert or mountains or whatever. You know, even snow, technically, you could be standing in a melted spot. Um, but if you do snow and you're playing in the desert, it's kind of weird. Snow, you're doing it in the forest, it's kind of weird. But either way, even if you do do snow, even if you do do something that's uh, very specific to a certain climate, your model always looks better when the model's based. I don't know why. It's like a miniature diorama. You would think that logically, it wouldn't matter what the base looks like. You paint your model. If your model looks good, it's on a black circle. Who cares? I mean, logically, that doesn't seem like it would matter, but you have to agree, or at least most people can agree, that models look way better when the basing's done. Number eight, nobody looks at eyes. Nobody. Only, only the extreme people that love painting and are super into the painting hobby ever check to see if you painted the damn pupils on your miniature. Now, I'm willing to bet some of you that were not really on the, f you really weren't on board with me with the 15 millimeter. You only somewhat on board with me with the basing. I think a lot more of you at this point are on board with what I'm saying now. Eyes are a no go. There's no point to paint eyes 9.9 .9 times out of 10. I get it if you're doing something for a competition, I get it if you enjoy painting, but the average Joe Blow player never picks up a model and is like, hey, did you paint these fucking eyes on here? No, nobody ever does that. So I think that we can all agree on that. Let's go to number seven. You've hidden at least one Warhammer purchase from your spouse or your family. At least one. Go, don't even, nope, 
Don't even try to deny it. We have all, at one point, kind of like slyly sh- snuck in a box into the house. And then you're like, what? No, I've always had that on the shelf. What are you talking about? My grandfather gave that to me in the 80s when he died. No, that's what you tell your spouse. No, we've all had at least one hidden purchase from family or a spouse. And that is pretty much undeniable. I think everybody has done that at some point. Even if you're not hiding it from a spouse, even if you're not hiding it from a family member or something like that, you have actually been embarrassed at some point and kind of like downplayed your purchases to a friend or someone who knows how often you buy stuff. And um, you know, maybe you shouldn't have bought it. Maybe you didn't really have the money that month for it. Maybe you're a little guilty about it because you know you really didn't need a third unit of Tyranid Warriors or whatever you bought. And you have definitely done that. You cannot argue against that. Number six, Crow Painted is rarely Crow Painted, okay? If you guys have been on eBay at all, it's like a running gag. That's like, oh, Pro Painted. Oh, look at this, Pro Painted. Number one, check the eyes. If they didn't paint the eyes, it's not Pro Painted. You can look back down on number eight of this list, okay? Um, number two, it is rarely Pro Painted. And the things that truly are Pro Painted are like super expensive on eBay. So there's really no point to buy Pro Painted because you're not going to match their color scheme unless you're going to buy the entire army from one painter so it all looks the same. Buying a single unit from a a painter and it's actually Pro Painted, you're paying like four or five times the actual cost of the model, and then it's not going to perfectly match the rest of your army. So it depends on whether or not you care about that. But nine times out of ten, Pro Painted rarely means Pro Painted. Number five. This might be a little controversial, but I think all of us can agree that the jump to 32 millimeter bases for Space Marines was a good jump. I think it was a good decision. I think the Space Marines look way better on 32 millimeter bases. They're beefier looking. They take up more of the board. They're just more imposing on a 32 millimeter base than a 25 millimeter base. I really believe that. Depending on how you had them positioned, their feet were like dangling off the 20, 25 millimeter base. Do you remember that? Like they, they were like standing on this tiny little, it looked like uh, in the cartoons, Looney Tunes, when the whole planet blows up and Duck Dodgers is just standing on this tiny little speck of planet with like a root hanging and Marvin the Martians hanging on the root beneath him. And he's like, oh, I claim this for the planet. That's what they look like when they're on the 25 millimeter bases. If your toes are sticking off your base, bro, you need to just get bigger base. I think 25 millimeter bases are the skinny jeans of miniatures. There, I said it. I said it. I've said what we're all thinking. Number three, you have more than one hobby project in the works right now. You do. I've seen your house. I know you have more than one kit bash that is not finished kit bashing. You have more than one neat conversion that's just sitting in a drawer somewhere. You have more than one army that you kind of started, but you didn't finish, and then you're just kind of sitting there in limbo. Yeah, you definitely do. Don't, don't. Don't try. No, I know. I know. So do I. I've got I've got far too many. Uh, well, I can't even get a list right. I think I skipped number four. I think I went from five to three. Whatever. Number f- <laughs> number four. GW is schizophrenic. I'm sorry. They are. If you look at the creative department, they definitely love Warhammer. They're into Warhammer. They know the lore. They write fantastic stories. Black Library is an amazing uh, arm of GW. They've produced all sorts of fantastic stuff. They know their stuff. They know their lore. They're really into it. They really do love the art of Warhammer. The sculptors put so much time and effort into every single detail and the little tabards and the little ribbons and all of that nonsense. And they, they try to create motion and action in the models and all of the engineering that goes behind making the spurs and slicing up the models so that they'll be injected properly and all of that there's a ton of skill and a ton of passion that goes into warhammer and i think that's pretty undeniable but at the same time there's an equally influential aspect to games workshop where they are purely about milking you for money purely about money purely about the meta constantly changing it so that people buy this or buy that or chase this this next hotness, right? There's uh, the constant price increases, the horrible uh, editing and sometimes formatting of their books where 
the people poured their heart and soul into these stories they wrote into the codexes. And then the codex themselves, the meat and potatoes of it, all the alignments are off. And then a lot of the rules are poorly worded. There was pr probably no editing. There's a lot of typos. I mean, there's like the half of Games Workshop that truly loves the hobby. And they probably play Warhammer themselves as, as a passion. Then there's like the corporate half of Games Workshop. And I think you can all agree with me that Games Workshop is quite schizophrenic in the way they operate because half the time they're a total douchebag and they just purely want their, your money because they're a corporation and they're just like a hungry, hungry hippo with your wallet. The other half the time you're like, wow, someone really cares about this IP. Someone really does care about the game and the lore and even some of the rules you see are pretty fluffy and, you know, like... Triarch Praetorians don't get the dynasty of, of whatever you chose because they're technically not part of the dynasty. They're part of the Triarchs. You know what I mean? They they do put fluffy stuff in there, but it's diluted by all of the other stuff that the other half of their uh, personality puts in there. So I think we can all agree that Games Workshop does not have a singular singular view. I think there are the people that absolutely do it as a passion, and there's other people that are just after your money. So, Games Workshop is schizophrenic. Number two, I think we can all agree that transports, as in the things that you transport your army in, is never, ever our first thought. If you think about that, like, you pick these models, you like this army, oh, you might like the rules, you, you know, you've got the codex, you buy the models, and you assemble the models, and you paint them, and you all this stuff, and then all of a sudden, every one of us at some point, have reached the point where it's like the person that paints the floor of a room and then paints themselves into a corner, and they go, oh, I can't leave this room until the paint's dry. I've just painted myself into a corner. It's basically us with our armies, at least our first army. Because transporting the models are almost never in our mind when we're first starting an army. We're like, oh man, this lore is cool. The IP is cool. I like the setting. Oh, these models are cool. Oh, wow. Look at this paint job. I love all this. I'm going to build this list and I'm going to play this way and I'm going to have so much fun and make new friends. And oh, wait, I got to bring my whole army to the store. How do you bring a whole army to a store? <laughs> and, then, and then you have to actually like research it or ask a friend or you got to think back to, oh, all my friends bring army transports. Okay, well, I guess I got to buy one of those. It's like nobody ever thinks about the army transport until they already have the army and it's assembled and it needs transporting. It's just funny to me. It's happened to me. It's happened to pretty much everybody I know where they just they get so caught up in the game that afterwards they're like, oh, shit, I got to buy or make a transport now. And it's just, it's just one of those little weird things in life that basically everybody gets hooked into. And finally, number one on the list of things that are basically undeniable about Warhammer. I know this probably will be a controversial statement to some of you who still have, you know, a coal in your heart where Warhammer Fantasy Battle used to be, right? But Age of Sigmar was actually a really good decision. It really was. I'm comfortable in saying that now. And it's funny because it's, it's kind of like a no-duh now, right? Age of Sigmar is very popular, um, they've made way more money in Age of Sigmar, uh, Sigmar and spread it out and expanded it and all of that, developed it way more. And they've got way more armies in Age of Sigmar than they ever did in Fantasy Battle. Now, I know a few of those like Flesh Eater Courts and those are broken off from larger armies, but now they are also getting slowly filled out more and more like Sylvaneth, the, um, that now they are their own army in their own right instead of being part of Wood Elves or whatever. And there was a lot of people, I mean a lot of people, back in the day when Age of Sigmar was announced and the Old World was killed and all of that, a ton of people, probably the majority, were saying that that was the bad move. Age of Sigmar was a bad decision and a bad risk, and Games Workshop's going to be out of business within a year, and Games Workshop shot theirself in the foot, and Games Workshop did a terrible decision, and this is a risk I shouldn't have taken, and blah, 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 blah. And guess what? Age of Sigmar actually turned out to be a pretty darn good decision for Games Workshop. And you know, it's funny because this sounds like a no-duh moment, like I said, but I've never actually heard anybody vocally state that a Age of Sigmar turned out to be a really good decision for Games Workshop versus the 
catastrophe that everybody, including myself, I didn't think it was great, especially the first edition of Age of Sigmar, but they did learn their lessons. They did actually add points and things like that. Um, the first edition of Age of Sigmar really was kind of a cat catastrophe, but they rebounded, and ultimately Age of Sigmar is way more successful than Warhammer Fantasy was for sales and expansion and all that. So I think that is 10 things that are basically undeniable that you cannot disagree with about Warhammer. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to GameAt.eu for supporting the show and Panhandle3D.com, as well as my beautiful, sexy, juicy, succulent, just moist in general Patreon patrons. I'll see you next week, guys.